please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We appreciate everyone coming tonight. The uh, first order of business is my report. And I, it's a little longer because we're not having a every other week a uh, newspaper article, so people don't really get as much information about what the city's doing. So anyway, I put I have a Facebook page and I have it for news, and and uh, you can look on that if you want to find out. I wanted to talk first about the spring in Herman. We finally turned our calendar from a long winter into a beautiful spring. The Herman High School baseball team is advancing in the district tournament. The spring flowers are blooming, hummingbirds and are back, and business is booming in a beautiful time. Tourists are already flocking to Herman. Restaurants are becoming crowded. Trolleys are full, and My Fest is next weekend. Actually, this weekend, coming up. You'll love the new My Fest 2018. There's a lot more of everything for everybody. Clean up, fix up, haul off, cut grass, and get rid of junk. Every forecast indicates that 2018 will be the third straight record tourist season as measured by act actual tourist tax receipts. Let's make our town even more beautiful for ourselves and our visitors by cleaning up around our homes, cutting our grass, removing our ugly stuff, painting, and fixing up our properties. If you own a lot, please keep it mowed and picked up. It is the neighborly thing to do. Cleaning up our community is contagious. It adds to city pride and helps increase our property values. So let's get started. Herman business status. All varieties of business are expanding in our city. Healthcare providers, retail stores, restaurants and bars, lodging and industrial businesses. The healthcare segment, our hospital clinics and nursing homes, is by far the largest source of revenue to the, into, the, into the Herman community. Our hospital needs our support. Legislative support would help, and using the services that they offer helps even more. The next in size is our industrial segment, Borgir, Herman Lumber, Herman Ready Mix, Concrete, Fundraising Bricks, Hop Incorporated, Laser Lock Technology, Leonard Sample, First Bank Service Company, New Store, Energy, Morrison Apparel, Demhurst Toys, Premium Packaging, and a few others. All account for a large chunk of Herman's economy. These final segments are close, so I don't rank those, but our retail stores, groceries, restaurants, and bars and lodging business businesses in no particular order. And of course, we have our schools, which is a large employer and a, high, and a big payroll. During the last two years, we've enjoyed the largest two years of sales tax collection in the history of Herman business. Likewise, Herman lodging tax increases, tallying the largest two-year period in Herman lodging tax history. It is way up again for the first four months of our calendar year 2018. Very large expansions are in process, process for our progress for our industrial businesses, out at the industrial park. These expansions will mean good jobs for the Herman community. Jobs. <coughs> I've read that there are no good jobs in Herman. That's not true. Jobs are easy to find here and are available in all price ranges depending on your qualifications and experience. There are many retail businesses that are hiring, and I'm sure more in the next 30 days as tourism gets into full swing. If you have the right qualifications, the industrial businesses are hiring as well. They pay more, usually pay more, and offer a little better benefits, but they require more training and experience. Herman has more job opportunities than it has job takers. You all have to, all you have to do is decide to get a job, so don't get one. Speaking at public meetings, I'm going to cover this since we have some people here. The Board of Auburn meeting is a city's business meeting. It's not a public forum for debate and discussion of public topics. Unfortunately, we have had undesirable things happen here, shouting, name calling, pushing and shoving, speakers having to be restrained by the police and escorted out of the meeting. These actions recently resulted in the establishment of the security checkpoint that you see out in the hall. We cannot and will not conduct city business under these conditions. 
The city has copied speaking meetings from other cities, and they're printed on our Board of Aldermen agenda and listed on hermanmoe.com. If you want to speak, you must fill out a speaker's card, sending your name, address, and subject that you wish to comment on, and give it to the city clerk before the meeting starts. And I notice we have two or three here. You can comment, not ask questions, or start debates. You'll be given three minutes to make your comments. This is an average for other cities. If you wish to ask questions or use more time, you should put your request in writing and forward it to the city clerk at least 72 hours before the meeting so can you can be put on the agenda. You'll need to give a longer description of what you intend to discuss, and your proposal will be forwarded to the mayor and alderman so they can prepare answers to your questions, and you can be given more time. Anytime there's an ordinance being voted on, I will waive the pre-registration rule and discussion of the ordinance may be carried out, and there's still more time. We want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to comment on an ordinance that's being proposed and discussed. The three-minute rule uh, is not in necessarily in effect then. The rules are commonplace in most city meetings, courts, and school board meetings. Herman Transparency. Herman is now more accessible and transparent than it ever has been. The Board of Alderman meetings can be seen live on Mediacom, or they can be watched whenever you want on YouTube. As always, I, work every, I walk every Friday at 9 a.m., and you can join me and talk about anything you want as long as you want. You can call the Mayor's Action Line at 573-486-2529 to report anything, unkept lawns, junk cars, etc. And for complaints about noisy noise and other public nuisances, call 573-486-5731. These numbers are in the newspaper. Of course, for emergencies, call 911. Our Long Range Planning Commission. The commission is a planning tool which we established two meetings ago. It will consist of the following committees. The fiber optic project, which is being led by Brian Shorley, and initial comm committee members are Jesse Geltz, Lee Pettyjohn, Mark Wallace, and myself. Brian will report on this committee's progress a little later. The caboose refurbishment project, project leader is Gary Liebman, with additional committee members Tracy Brennan, Paul Eubanks, Jim Hensey, Billy Grace, and Catherine Rennie. Gary reports that the committee has already held its first meeting. He sent a series of questions, uh, and we've gotten some of the answers already. There's been research done by their members, and they're ready to go to fix the boots up, make it look nice as a, a focal point for the community. The Riverfront Development Committee project leader will be <coughs> Stephanie Hibden, with additional committee members to be determined. The Walt Pike Jog Trail pro uh, Project, the leaders Mark Wallace and members are Susan Weiner, Jeff Yielding, and John Lewis at this point. And they, uh, they are waiting really for the grant uh, response to come back from the, from the people who sent the grant to see if we can get approved. The Frank Creek Bridge, 19 South Bridge Project, I'm the leader and we're waiting for instructions and uh, further information from MoDOT and from the state. Focus Group Project is not active right now. A youth center project has been started, and this is, we need a project leader. Uh, this is an active project with a sponsor and some funding in place. So this is something that can happen, but we need a leader to push this forward. And then a 501c3 project, which would be, uh, 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 give us the ability to, to take uh, donations and give tax credit. So, that should be available to any one of these committees once we get it going, and it's already being worked on. I've asked them to call the city attorney to make sure we coordinate everything that's done there. These are active projects that can be worked out, worked on simultaneously. If Mark or I work independently, we can only work on a couple of these things at the same time. But this way we can work on all eight of them at once if we decide to do that. The Herman Street and Road Report. This is an explanation of Herman Street and Road Resurfacing Program. Herman has 22 miles of streets, and they are paid for by a one-half cent sales tax, earmarked strictly for that purpose. This tax generally brings in about $270,000 per year, and after salaries and capital costs, 
uh, are detected leaves about 110 to 120 thousand uh, dollars for repaving streets. This is about enough to repave an average two streets a year, or maybe three. In recent years, we've done more because we've had streets that did not require sewer, water, or curb and gutter replacement, but we're running out of these streets. We're trying to rebuild our 22 miles of streets on a maintenance budget. We think by using a new system called CRF and working closely with the water department, we can stretch these dollars to possibly repave four streets next year, three or four streets, and CRF six or eight more. As you know, the city asked the citizens to pass a bond issue in 2012 to replace our streets. It passed by a simple majority, but did not get the two-thirds necessary, which we understand. That's why you have that ability to stop taxes that you don't want. So as Alderman Fairber says, we are on the pay-as-you-go pay plan for now. Always mention that. That's good. So we have, I know our streets are very bad. We all know our streets are very bad. You know they're very bad. They were neglected for years and years, and now we're paying for those decisions with bad streets and not the ability uh, to fix them all as fast as we like. Gas and electric rate comparison. Electric rate comparison. Herman's published electric rate is, point, is 0 0.0969 per kilowatt hour, and the average, average rate is 0 0.1017 per kilowatt hour, and or 100 kilowatt hours, I guess it is. And our average for Ameren is based on, this average is based on Herman's actual usage of electric. Their use pattern throughout month by month applied to Ameren's published monthly rate. So if we average our hours on the Ameren's rate, um, their, summer, their summer rate is 0 0.1208, their winter rate is 0 0.0858, and that gives us the uh, point one zero one seven that I just discussed. So Ameren's about seven percent higher than we are, and I think we may soon have. They they may have already had another price increase. It's been approved. I don't know if it's in those numbers. Or not. Gas rate comparison. Herman's published gas rate is point is zero point seven two per hundred cubic feet, and Ameren's rate is point eight zero per hundred cubic feet. Ameren is slightly more than eleven percent higher than Herman. Herman has not increased either gas or electric rates for several years, and if your bill at either of these has gone up, you're using them. It's just a simple fact. Uh, anybody that wants to talk about rates or any of this, please call and make an appointment, and I'll, or I'll meet you, and we can discuss it. So there's no secrets. These numbers come from our city uh, county. All right, that's my report. Uh, last week I attended the MRPC meeting in St. James on Thursday evening. It was a good meeting. I've been working with Duke Florence on their natural gas transportation contract. And I sat in on the two new lift station pre bid meetings last week. One at uh, Franklin down by Espresso Lane, the other at 6th and Gutenberg to get uh, wastewater uh, up and over the creek to the manhole. I have been contacting state agencies on the status of various grant applications. Park Department is getting ready to fill the pool probably tomorrow and do a lot of mowing, of course. Water departments will, will be replacing two fire hydrants this week. And the gas department will be installing a new service line. The street department is working on some hot mix and patching around town. The electric department has removed all the overhead primary to lower park and replaced it with underground. They have installed the metering for the new lift station down by the high school and will be working on getting a new transformer set and a and watering run at the Stonehill bottling plant. And finally, I wish to extend my condolences and, and uh, all the workers here at the City of Herman to the family of City Gas Water employee Ralph Barnes who suddenly and unexpectedly passed away last week. Uh, Ralph was here, I don't know, six months possibly. Uh, he didn't say much, but he was well liked and did a good job, and uh, we, we will miss Ralph. That's my report. Thank you, Mark. Next on the agenda is the Tree Commission. Stan Stevens is here to discuss waivers <coughs> for tree planting in front of downtown businesses. Stan? 
Do you all have copies? I do. Okay. Um, what we're proposing here is to uh, put in a waiver for planting trees in front of businesses that do not fit the parameters of the tree ordinance. Uh, this allows uh, the uh, property owner to put in a tree where we, by ordinance, have said uh, can't be done. But uh, if they will agree to the waiver, this puts the onus on them. There are a number of situations that are kind of iffy, and it's really hard to um, put those down in black and white. And a lot of situations, not a lot, but th there are a few situations where it looks like a tree will not survive or it shouldn't be in a certain place for a certain reason. And uh, it may not always turn out that way. Example, uh, if you're all aware of the fastigit oak trees down by the German school that uh, P. Ridge Tree Farm put in a number of years ago, it looked like the three that were right near the German school were going to be lost. One, I would have told you, was dead. The second one was half dead, and the third one was surviving. If you look at them today, they're all leafed out just like they're brand new trees. So they don't always fit uh, what we think they should fit. This just gives uh, somebody the option of uh, going for it. It puts the onus on the, on the uh, property owner. If the tree dies, it's on him. The city won't replace it. And uh, I don't know. Any questions? So if they have a question about it, they can call the tree com commission and you'll explain the process. They can, we can get a hold of uh, they can get a hold of us. You can always call me. Uh, the city knows how to find somebody on the tree commission. Right. Let me say that the Cause the problem we had was the ordinance said that a tree could not be planted closer than one foot to the curb or one foot or, or closer than one foot to the sidewalk. And that's so that would require two feet. But we have a lot of areas in the city, the downtown business district, that don't have two feet between the curb and the sidewalk. Right. So they weren't allowed to plant any trees by ordinance. And this is to get around that and allow the people to the ability, if they call you, probably tell them what kind of trees would, you think would do all right there. We can work it out. Right. If they have something they want, um, and I'm not the expert, we do have some professional tree people on the board. Uh, uh, John Fleming, he's a consulting forester. He's the one who wrote this up. Um, he would be a very good uh, person to confer with these people. and up to some kind of a decision. Stan, would those trees be ones that would not cause damage to the sidewalk or the curb gutter with the root system? <laughs> or the overhead power line? Yeah. That's, that's what we're looking at right here. Sure. Those are the obvious uh, uh, faults. Now, once we get past that, it's the uh, decision as to whether or not the tree can survive. This is what I think this is written for. The obvious overhead power lines and the sewer lines, uh, they're a given that that won't work. So. Well, so trees require a certain amount of maintenance. Who's responsible for that? You would ask me that one. Well, uh, just from personal experience, getting a tree on across the face when you're walking down the side of the something, that's just a little bit you know, sticks in my mind a little bit. I've well, had my glasses knocked off. Right. Yeah, well, that's true. Now everybody's 6'6". And Mark, maybe you can help here. We have talked about putting some money into educating or training some of our city people um, for pruning these things properly. We need some uh, uh, certified arborists. We have uh, Gosh, I don't know if we have two in the city now. We had four at one time. Jesse Geltz is one. I'm not sure who else. But uh, we should have people on the city payroll who can do this. 
it would be easy for me to say, yes, we'll volunteer to do it, but you know how that goes with uh, non-paid organizations. Well, it's another thing also when you're that close to the street, people can get upset if a tree limb drags down the side of their vehicle. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that could cause some damage to a vehicle also. Those, those are in the ordinance. The, the tree branches have to be a certain height, certain something. So I don't see any reason for that to be forgiven. But on the, if I'm reading this correctly, the people who are getting the special waiver, it says that they have to plant it, they have to water it and fertilize it and remove it if it dies. The that, person who planted it, who received the waiver. That's, that's the way it's written. Then they would have ultimate responsibility for making sure all these things get done. They actually would, but uh, if they don't know anything about a tree, we would certainly be. I mean, it's not that difficult or time-consuming to take care of a young tree. Um, Ten minutes a year can take care of. Well, Stan, I like trees. I do, but if a tree's a problem, my solution is pruning at a ground level, and that's going to upset people if we let them plant these trees and they don't take care of them. We have to take them out. Well, that's something we just have to deal with as the situation arises. I'm hoping that this would, working with the tree commission, that the right tree would be in the right spot and we wouldn't have a lot of those issues. I hope that's what this was meant to happen. I agree. And I, okay. And I think this will, will work. It'll certainly make people happier than they are right now, where we just have acres of uh, concrete. Any other questions? Thanks. Do you foresee people coming to the city hall to pick up this form and us getting it to you or vice versa? Say again, Trish. The forms, are we going to be distributing <coughs> them from city hall? You'll send we'll, people we'll to the front these, office? You can have these at city hall. Uh, I suppose we'll have some in the tree commission. It would probably be easier for people to find you. They know where you are. So it would be desirable to have you maintain a stockpile. Any other questions? Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Good report. Now you have several ordinances we're going to get into, uh, Dave. All right, the first, which is on for second reading, is bill <coughs> number 2018-15. An ordinance to approve and to authorize the execution of a First Amendment to Memorandum of Lease Agreement by and between the City of Carbon, Missouri and MCC, Missouri, LLC. I move the second vote. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, resolutions. The resolution in your packets is number 1251. It would be a resolution authorizing the issuance of space permits for the MyFest Festival. I make a motion we pass the resolution. Second. If a motion made and seconded, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next item of business is uh, unfinished business. And I have a report on transportation that I'm going to read. And uh, it's very general, but a lot of people don't know what we're talking about. And we haven't had an opportunity to discuss it. There was no discussion at the last two meetings. So I'm going to read this and hopefully it will help you. Safe transportation is extremely important to both our tourist business and our local citizens and their children. This is a basic outline of the five main points we're considering for inclusion in our transportation bill. It's not limited to this. It's not saying these will be. This bill will cover uh, everyone engaged in transport and transportation in Herman except Uber, which to my knowledge is state regulated. I think. Uh, public safety section, there's a public safety section which um, asks for copies of current state inspections uh, current driver's licenses for each driver to make sure they're the right kind of licenses and, uh, and so forth. Then the second item is financial responsibility section 
which has to do with insurance. Make sure that there is <coughs> an adequate amount of insurance and we'll check with other cities to see what they require. But we want the, every vehicle to be insured and uh, we should have copies of the insurance certificates and a form filled out that says if there's changes in insurance, cancellations, changes, reductions, uh, or anything like that, that we will get a copy of that so we know. Third thing would be our municipal law section, which will cover all the ordinances we have that cover transportation uh, that we have at the time. So city has a right, we have quite a few actually. I'm not going to get into them now, but um, all the municipal laws need to be upheld or changed. That's how we do things. We either uphold the ones we have or we change them. Uh, but in this case, we would requ require the laws be upheld. The next thing would be a road use fee section. So there would be a fee for, fee for using the roads uh, for the use of and any expenses involved in administering the program and anything else like that. So um, that would be the fourth section. And then the last section would be penalties if somebody doesn't abide by the rules. So we'll build this into the, the ordinance and, and, um, and that, that'll be a part of it. And that's basically it. Those are the five things. Very simple. Most, most of these are already things that are being done by people in transportation. They have insurance. They have driver's licenses. They have inspections. It's a car. We know what kind of inspection it is. We just want to, want to have copies. We don't want to have to call the state to get it. And that's it. That's, uh, that's what I had for transportation. Um, the next item is the fiber optic report from the Metro. Um, <clears throat> well, we had uh, our first meeting uh, a couple of Fridays ago and um, basically trying to get all the pieces together of what what is ongoing and what still needs to be done. Um, we're looking at um, a new one, maybe two different options of getting um, internet access or fiber access uh, either across the river or from south of town. We're exploring those options. Um, we're doing some grant research um, in case there's some new new grants that have opened up since we last researched it. Um, one thing that has changed is the USDA um, and the federal definition of what high-speed internet is has actually changed since the last time we looked at grants. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a higher threshold, or well, kind of lower for us, uh, a lower threshold as far as easier for our community to, to um, to qualify for those now than it used to be. Um, it used to be at a level where not very many people qualified for for the USDA grants, and so now they increase the the minimum speed to be considered high speed internet. Um, and we are currently under that speed, so we should qualify for some that we haven't qualified for in the past. We're doing that research to see um, if anything fits our <coughs> specific situation. And along with that, financing is ongoing, um, trying to determine what um, programs, again, what we can qualify for. Um, and, uh, and then we're also in the process of talking to local businesses. If any other, if any local businesses are out there that need um, high-speed internet, you know, contact me or contact the City Hall. And um, we want to discuss um, what your needs are and um, then we will get with our providers um, once we get that far and try to determine um, a pricing structure that you can live with and a speed um, service that, that they can provide. And then we'll have um, conditional purchase orders that will um, help back up our financing so that we can go to the financing options and say, look, we have so many customers um, already ready to go as soon as we get this done all we need is the financing um, and so we're working on all that um, we have three or four people working on it um, and uh, we're trying to get it all going as fast as we can of course there's some things are slow and don't happen as quick as we want them to but but we're working on it so
Well, can I have a question? Yep. The, uh, the committee that you got shouldn't, uh, as we hire the tourism economic director, shouldn't she be on that committee? I didn't hear her name on that committee. Well, don't you? No, I mean, in that part of economic development. I don't think she's got the economic development yet, but we can put her on anyway. I, do you have extra time to, to be on this committee? You don't have time to answer now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, I was just thinking that that was part of that. Well, it's not maybe, I'm, maybe I'm out of place, but I just... No, no, it's fine. Uh, and I don't think it's, there's any reason to keep her off. Okay. But I, I know I, I see her every day, and she usually has a phone stuck in her ear, and, <laughs> and the other one's ringing, and people are waiting in line to come into her office. Okay. So... I think it's a good idea for her to be on her, but I think we ought to let her get through her first my fest yeah. first before we throw that at her. No problem. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Is there any other unfinished business? I do have one thing. Uh, a few meetings back, I asked about uh, for a couple of constituents of mine, Don and Althauser, about vacating part of that old sidewalk. And you look at that old I looked at the sidewalk and it does not serve any purpose. I just haven't got time to talk to you. Todd and whoever I need to talk to about getting everybody. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I'm finished. Related to unfinished. Okay. Uh, new business. Do we have any new business? <coughs> no. <coughs> okay, motions. Do we have a motion on the minutes? I will do a perfect I'll second them. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. The invoices for payment. What do we want to do with those? Motion made to Second. We have a motion made to pay them, and it's been seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Uh, we have a conditional use permit, concert hall, and barrel Alex Timmy, 206 East 1st Street. Outdoor liquor consumption. We've done this in the past, and I know of no problem, Chief. No concerns. I will move the group. Do I have a second? No. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. This is for the pen application, Herman's Lions Club. Kettle corn and concessions, caboose area, uh, May 18 and 19, 2018. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion is carried. We have a caterer's permit request from the VFW Post 4182 for the motorcycle rally, amphitheater, the June 9, 2018. I will move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Approved. We have an event, amend the special event application, motorcycle rally, uh, additional street closure of 5th Street from Portland Lock west of Amphitheater to Gutenberg and Grassy Area, June 9th, 2018. And I believe we have an amendment. Do you want to throw that Trish? Is there an amendment? Um, the amendment is just right here in red on your um, application. It's um, this street would be the additional request from um, Gutenberg. We have, it says on here Schiller, but I think it's actually just to the parking lot. But it still requires street being closed. Okay, and the Grassy area. Okay, and the area. So where, where are we? Does that, does that include the games if they want? That is on your desk in front of your. Uh, right, is this part of this? Amendment? Well, that is why they want the street closed. Okay, so they want to play games, uh, motorcycle games, on 5th Street and in the Grassley area. And the games, which we have a description of now, are such that Murma won't insure. So um, they're going to get, have to get insurance, which they haven't gotten yet. Have they gotten the insurance yet? No. And uh, we don't know who it's going to come from from because they don't have it. So we, I think we have to have coverage for this. And I suppose we could pass it con, uh, contingent upon the getting the insurance, 
but I want the alderman to, uh, to understand and think about the fact that if it's some activity that our insurer won't cover because it's too dangerous, we should consider that, that when we make a decision. He's, they're saying we're not going to cover it. In addition to that, can they ask for alcohol to be um, allowed in this area? Not yet. That was next agenda, possibly. Okay. So, so there's a lot of unknowns, in my opinion, on this, and I think uh, it's a game that uh, these games are apparently dangerous, and we're closing streets for them, and we're injecting alcohol. So even though it's insured, if there's a claim, I'm sure we'll be drawn into it. So I just want you all to know that I have some concerns with that. Will participants have to sign a release if they do any of these activities? I don't know. Are those uh, powerful instruments that a person signs a release? It's, Not necessarily. It's Not necessarily. <laughs> That's been my experience. Well, from my experience being on this council, you don't have to have a reason to sue us. I mean, you can sue anybody for any damn yeah. thing you want to. These games are games commonly played at motorcycle. Raleigh is the only one that has any inherent danger to it at all. What I can see is the burnout pit, and they've taken precautions against uh, with it. Uh, I mean, catching a tennis ball that's rolled through a tube and caught out the other side is not dangerous. So throwing a balloon over a clothesline is not dangerous. I'm assuming it's a water balloon. Uh, the plank race. You know, you just roll as far as you can on a motorcycle on a plank, see how far you can go without putting your feet down. I mean, it's not a, it's not a little stupid. Well, it's like, the only thing is, all those games, they are on their motorcycles and they're doing, you know, so yeah. there's always a chance that one of them could. Well, that's true, and I think the waiver's a good idea, and we definitely have to, it has to be insured. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Okay. There's some reason why Merma won't cover it, and that's why we didn't have them last year, because Merma wouldn't cover it. I think they did get insured. Sure, what happened? But I've said my piece, and uh, what's your, what's your, what do you want to do? With it? I'd say we've got to, you've got to get the insurance. We can still pass this on the next. Uh, well, we can still have, we can still have. This is just for street closure, right? Is that street closure? And we're not allowing the activity. Well, that's the reason. If we're not going to have the games, and they probably don't need the street closure. We could still use it for parking, which yeah. would not hurt at all. I mean, we've done that before where we've closed streets without knowing exactly what's going to happen. But I don't think this is going to change. I mean, they need to make plans, right? For the, they need to know. Well, as long as you get insurance. I well, think the thing is, is that the city is sponsoring it, so the tourism department will have to purchase the event insurance. Right. I mean, my motion would be to go ahead and, and approve this street closure you know, knowing that any activity has to be insured, insured before it can be even done. I mean, that's kind of a given on any anything. So, I mean, you can have the street closure and and do whatever activities you know are acceptable. You know, if it's not insured, it's not. If it's not insurable, it's not acceptable. Right. So, I would say go ahead and pass the street closure. Or you're is, making a motion. Yeah, I make Is that there any other discussion? I will okay, second it. We, we have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. And uh, reappoint Connie Johnson and Brian Shortley to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We have a motion. I'll move to approve. Second. I have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is carried. <laughs> Reports, boards, and commissions. I don't believe we have any. So we are ready for citizens' comments. And we have two. First of all is Mike Sloan, and he wants to talk about transportation. My name is Mike Sloan I'm with the Herman Herman Worst House. And just a com couple comments on the uh, transportation uh, proposed bill. <coughs> um, as as the, the mayor was reading off some of those uh, five points, it seemed to me like maybe some of those are already a duplication of what is already on the books. 
whether it's a state or or federal law to have your license and insurance and things of that sort. And uh, I'm not against regulations, but I just know from experience, regulation seems to drive up cost. And uh, as it drives up cost, it can consolidate businesses. And uh, you know, Saturday after I closed up my store, I drove around town to get a newspaper and a candy bar and went over to the gas station and Saturday evening, about 6.30, 7 o'clock, and I was just so amazed and proud of how busy town was. And what I mean by Wharf Street was just full of cars and everybody was walking on the sidewalks and First Street was busy and Fourth and, you know, Schiller and Market Street was busy and and we all know that, you know, Herman has a lot of good businesses and uh, but behind all that, Herman's, Herman, Missouri's number one product, really their number one product is people. And the key to having a prosperous economy in Herman is movement of people. Movement of people nowadays is a lot better than it was in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s when a lot of us grew up. Um, we had big crowds then, but they were very slow moving crowds. And you kept crowds more time on the cars, in their cars, uh, than there was on the, in, the, in the stores. So I'm just concerned that if you increase costs to any type of transportation system, um, there's going to be less dollars spent in stores uh, to buy bratwurst or pies or antiques or whatever it may be. Um, so I, I really caution you on that, to really look at that because people, when they come to Herman, and Herman competes with a lot of other towns, and a lot of other towns have Herman in their sights, and they'll, they'll steal our, our crowds. And, uh, and some of them are pretty good at that, so we have to be real careful that we keep those folks coming and treat them right and don't gouge them too much. Um, also, when you start talking fees on our transportation system, I mean, I think it's a very delicate area because you've got, you know, you've got trolleys in town, you've got party buses that come from wherever. Um, you've got hotel vans that are in town all the time, moving people, driving up and down the streets. You've got limos, taxis, um, Oats buses, um, you got the chamber selling buses, I mean selling um, our Herman Chamber of Commerce. Uh, <clears throat> Kay and, and Tammy, they do a great job of getting buses into town. And I don't know the exact number, but I would say we probably have had, uh, this is May and it's not really busy yet, but I'd say we probably have had 20 to 30 buses so far this year. By the end of the year is over, we should have Omics, um, you know, 80, 75, 80, 90 buses coming in, uh, 55 people to a bus, 45 people to a bus. Um, and a lot of those buses, they sell those, they sell those a year out. Um, we, have, we have bookings for buses for already for 2019 and 2020. Um, those prices are set. <clears throat> and when you start adding on costs, those people are gonna take a look at that and say, well, we can go somewhere else. And they will because Everybody's watching, trying to get our customers. So that's a real delicate area to, to try to increase your cost because of, of transportation, but it's got to be uniform. And I don't know how to make that uniform. I think that's, that could be a real problem. Um, 10 seconds. What's that? 10 seconds. <laughs> Am I done? Just Is that three minutes already? Okay. I'm done. Thank you. Well, thanks, Mike. I think those are good points, and those are things we have to consider. Uh, so I appreciate you uh, telling us about those. Uh, the next, number two, is uh, uh, Tracy Hankin and Dan McKinney. Uh, on behalf of HRED, they want to address a need for broadband. I guess I'm Tracy today. <laughs> <laughs> about to retire. 
Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm Dan McKinney, speaking on behalf of HRED. I think HRED mainly just wanted to say that we'd like to uh, support and work with the committee, you know, on trying to do more with uh, inter the internet access. I know on behalf of the school and the hospital, we both already have high-speed internet. I know right now we're at 200, probably going to go to 1,000. A lot of things are on our, our standpoints are being pushed by what's going on with the federal government. Uh, you know, and I think we're very fortunate that we've got the way our funding comes through the Department of Ag, and the Department of Ag basically pays for two thirds of our costs. Still expensive, though. You know, we're still paying uh, probably roughly seventy thousand dollars a year, you know, for internet access. You know, so, so and I know the schools got their own programs too, but I know it's important to the to the HRED that we all work together to try to do what we can do to help bring in more businesses. And you all know as well as we do that you know internet's important to that standpoint. So HRED's main money wanted to put there had in to say we'll be glad to help you any way we can. You know, if you want someone on the, on the committee from that standpoint, I'm sure we'll, we'll get someone to help you out from that standpoint. Okay. Any questions from anybody, Stan? No, we appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we, we would like to have representatives from Patriot, the hospital, uh, uh, school system, and other others uh, that are around town so we can get their input too. So that's... Uh, that's, thank you. We appreciate your comments. Uh, that's the only two I have. So we'll uh, we'll draw the line. I appreciate what everybody said. I think they're good comments. Uh, Mike, we appreciate your comments. And uh, anyway, uh, we don't have any more. Do we have a? That's that's our meeting. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I'll second. We have a motion made to second it to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're done. Thank you.